Hello again, uh, this is Hollis Turnbow and welcome again to Quilt is Desired. In this show I have a lot of very exciting things and very interesting things for you. I'll talk more about the selection of the design, the, the placement of the design, uh, appropriateness of it, how to adjust the design, especially the borders, and then ultimately toward the end of the show we'll actually cut a stencil if you should find yourself in that situation that absolutely nothing will fit or work and you want to cut your own, which a lot of people do. So stay with us, it's gonna be interesting. Welcome back to Quilt as Desired. I'm Hollis Turnbow, and in this episode I want to walk deeper and deeper into this aspect of learning more about the quilting motif and quilting designs. More about the selection, the appropriateness of it, how you make so those adjustments that you might need to. So stay with us, this is going to be very interesting. I've talked a lot about uh, specific designs and uh, especially mentioned at one time or other the double wedding ring. Here's an example. The stencils are usually made in the two most popular sizes and that's the 15 inch ring and the 18 inch ring. This stencil was scaled for the 18 inch ring and these are obviously smaller. So my stencil doesn't work there but it's an interesting uh, thing that happened when I put it down onto the onto the quilt here, this center just fits within the center here. So don't overlook the possibility that parts of your stencil or your quilting motif may be appropriate. Here's another example here. When I first selected this, I started to put mark and put a design into the pattern fabric here, but I realized that you absolutely could not see it. So since these were solid, by quilting only in the solid hexagons here, it gives excellent texture to your quilt. Another example, a very simple crib quilt here. When selecting the design, think about the compatibility and the number of ways that you can repeat that design onto your uh, quilt. That gives some cohesion to it. This one I made just out of strips of fabric that had hearts in it, so that became my theme then. So I happen to have a stencil, continuous line design, that was hearts, very easy to quilt. So I quilted that down into the two strips on the side. Then to carry out the compatibility theme, I took two stencils, or I took one stencil and I used the center here and just flipped it. So hearts here that I quilted, a quilting stencil, more hearts, and then I flipped it here. So I have an overall compatibility to the quilting design and to this piece. A very simple quilt, but turned out to be very effective using just the one stencil. I did another one that was just uh, the rainbow stripes, and trying to make a decision about how to quilt it, was not quite sure how much I really wanted to do. So I had a stencil that was this leaf pattern. What I did is I drew it on paper, went to the copy machine, and uh, duplicated several copies of that into the size that I thought I would use. And then I laid it across the quilt like this to see how much adjustment I might need to make to make it fit. Because when you have a pattern as you have here, adjustments are very easy because you could add or subtract just a bit within between each of these leaves and still you'll have a continuity of the design. I even considered putting a smaller one in the small stripes here, but thought that would be just a little bit more work than I wanted to do, even though it would have been a very uh, compatible uh, design. 
So one easy way to make an adjustment that, especially if you have a design as I have here, that's regular but easy to adjust without seeing those adjustments, then make a copy. If you can see very closely, what happened is after I did each repeat, I had to add a quarter of an inch between each one. This tells me now that when I lay this down on the quilt and start marking it, every repeat I need to add a quarter of an inch. So I would mark and just slide the stencil and continue marking. So by doing a sample like this to begin with, it helps you later when you're actually marking with the stencil. Another example, which I don't have a quilt of, was I used this design uh, for a quilt. Again, all I'm concerned about is the regularity. So my stencil had a nice repeat, and I added a little bit right in here. But by doing first on a sample uh, paper, then you know where you can make those adjustments. I love to work with designs like this, the, 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 the leaves and those, because wherever you make adjustments, it's okay, because what your eye sees is the flow and the regularity. I've also discussed uh, 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 a lot about those instances in which you find a directional stencil. And I've talked about how you need at some point to change the direction of that stencil. I found two stencils that uh, illustrate that very, uh, uh, very well. Here's one that the direction goes this way. So it means that everything comes up into the corner. So down here somewhere, I need to change the direction. And I just simply flip the stencil like this. And it doesn't make any difference what this motif turns out to be. It can be long, it can be short. Because I know that the top and bottom will be the same and the two sides will be the same. So again, that adjustment needs to keep a flow with your eye. Very simple tricks and tips on making uh, very simple adjustments. Now, I talked earlier about the compatibility of designs. And on the table, which I've had here, is a very simple Amish uh, a square and a square design. And I have a series of stencils here that I want to show how I used that in making uh, the, creating the overall design. It's rather interesting and I chuckle at myself thinking that I've designed stencils so I'm going to do a series of stencils and then make a quilt to fit. But it didn't work that way because when I got out into bands and borders, I still had to do the same adjustment that everyone does. But let me show this and it will give you an idea of the compatibility of designs. Here's the center. Very simple stencil. Has a little hole down here. And the idea is to take, put a pin there, mark around until you have a complete circle. So very easy stencil to make a center medallion within this type quilt. Then if you'll notice here, I have a particular design in this band and in this band. And I have two stencils that illustrate that. So somewhere out in the quilt, I'm going to have the same design that you find in the center. So again, even though it's a combining a lot of designs together, I have some compatibility. So this one would go into this band here, and then this one came into this sashing strip out here. Now, what do I do with this section here? I simply took another design that I had used in the center, like this, and moved it out into this triangular section here. So again, I have some compatibility, compatibility here. And the idea is, is combining a number of different motifs. Here is another center that has a possibility. If I w didn't want something as fancy as this, I could put grid in the center. But I chose to use this one because it had a little bit more class to it than this one. But then when I came to the outer uh, border, it became more of a challenge because it was a wider space. 
I knew that my stencil would not fit. So what I did is I drew a number of repeats of that particular design and put it down on the quilt, thus so, and saw exactly where it came into the center. Now because it's a directional stencil, I knew that I would have to flip it at some point. But again, how much space would I have down there where I flipped it? I discovered that in order to make this center section come out in a reasonable orderly fashion, that I would need to add a little bit of space in here. Actually a quarter of an inch it told me that I'd here in order to bring this down into a, a uniform way along each section. So again, by making a pattern first, laying it down, making the adjustment, measuring it, it told me what kind of, what kind of adjustment I need to make. So do that first. It's almost like the carpenters measure three times and then cut once. You know, do this. Make copies, play with it a little bit, and then you'll know exactly how your space is going to fill. Stay with us because I want to dig a little bit deeper into the idea of quilt as desired. Actually doing some adjustment, show you how I did it on another quilt, another example, and then ultimately stencil was cut to fill a very special space. So stay with us. Welcome back to Quilting as Desired. I'm Hollis Turnbow and I hope in the meantime you've been thinking about the quilting motifs and the quilting designs on your quilt. I want to show you a couple of additional examples now uh, going a little bit deeper into the idea of uh, this time to make your own stencils. On the table here I have a very simple quilt. Uh, I participated in a fabric exchange and got all of these uh, Civil War era prints and not sure what I wanted to do with it. They were pre-cut so I just sewed them together and made a center. And then added two borders, a, a small border here and a large border here. Then started thinking about how it would be quilted. First consideration was what do I put in the blocks. It, it needs to be something that's fairly compatible, fairly easy, machine quiltable, so I found a stencil here that worked for me. The blocks are five and a half inches, the stencil is five inches, so therefore that gives me that quarter inch from the edge of the stencil design to the uh, uh, seam line that I need in order for it to fill the space. If I had one a little bit smaller it would work as well, but at least this one works. It's still compatible with its design so it will work fine. Then I came out to the borders and was not sure what I wanted to do. A very narrow strip, I think it finished up at one and a half inches, so I needed something very small. So I had this stencil, uh, just uh, waving lines, but it was three. So I said, well, I'll just use two. So again, look at the stencil to see how much you can use. So I decided to use just the two lines and it fit perfectly into that space. However, while this is a certain size, it might not fit into my space. So I went to the copy machine, I drew it off, I made a whole bunch of strips like this and sewed them together. And not sew them together, but taped them together down on, uh, on the piece. Came to the corner, the stencil does not have a corner. We get a lot of complaints and questions uh, from quilters about why don't you put a corner on the stencil? Well, the first thing is it seemed very obvious what you might do, but that was obvious to me, but might not be obvious to you. So the first thing I did was draw a corner in here. Drew on the paper an exact size of the finished border. Put the stencil up, decided where it would fall, where the corner would fall, and put some marks in it. So here I am. And in marking a border stencil like this, knowing that you have to make some adjustment here, always come well out of the corner. Don't do any jiggling around with the corner because that's the four consistent things your eye wants to see. 
So then I drew it down. I started adding uh, some other pieces to it. When I came down to the center here, here's the center point right here. I knew that I should either be down in the valley or up on top of the mountain when I reached this particular point. So either of those places would be fine for the center. And when I came down here, I discovered that I needed to add or subtract three quarters of an inch. Now that tells me how I need to adjust the stencil when I put it down. So what I did, I would put the stencil down after I drew the corner. I would mark to the valley, slide the stencil just slightly, just a smidgen bit. Went to the top, slid it just a little bit. So when I reached this point, I knew that I was either down at the bottom or up at the top, and it fit perfectly. Since I didn't have a corner, and yet I wanted all the arcs to be consistent, I drew the circle, not the circle, but the arc here. And then with my double blade knife that I used for cutting stencils, I made myself a paper stencil. Now all four, four corners are going to be consistent. So stencils, they can be made even for the very simplest part. You don't have to do a full stencil. Very simple. When I came out to the outer border, it was the same situation. I made several copies of the stencil on the copy machine. I put them, taped them together. When I brought them down to the center, again, I discovered that I needed to enlarge each of these cables here just slightly so that my diamond here would come exactly on the point. So do a lot of playing around first so that you know exactly where this adjustment needs to be made. It'll save a lot of frustration. Now I need to take just a minute and get set up on the table uh, to show you an example of where I needed to recut a new stencil because absolutely nothing in the stencil company catalog would fit the space. So I'll be right back. Welcome back. This is Hollis Turnbull again, uh, walking with you on your journey to Quilt is Desired. There are a lot of stencils out there, uh, pictures and magazines and books and all sorts of things to help you select and use and create the quilting motif. Because as the book says, it's not a quilt until it's quilted. So now we need to get down to that. There may be a situation, though, in which you simply cannot find what will fit the space or what is appropriate to your space. The little quilt here, uh, Amish type quilt, is a very good example of that. I made this as a second uh, uh, attempt after using this pattern in another uh, quilt that I made. So it was created from a lot of stuff that I had left over. In making it, it really didn't make any difference what size these were as long as they were all consistent. But when I came down to actually finding a design that would fit into this triangle, nothing would fit, regardless of the, none of the thousand designs in the stencil company catalog would exactly fit there. So I got to the point that I said, well, I have to create my own. So what I did is I drew the design, the finished design of the triangle on a piece of paper. I simply folded it like so, put a few lines in it, and then using special tools and equipment and supplies, I was able to draw my own stencil. Now this becomes practical if you're going to repeat this many, many times over the course of the quilt, which I did in this instance. If you're going to do just one or two, then it might not be worth your time and expense to buy the equipment, but yet it's a good uh, tool to have. The second example, which I want to show you by actually cutting a stencil, was in my Civil War theme uh, fabric exchange that I did. Wanted something very simple. These came to me in fat quarters, so I looked at it and decided what size block I needed so I could get eight by, eight, eight by 10 pieces out of my fat quarters. So I'm thinking a little bit about the economy of the use of the fabric. So in order to decorate it or doctor it up a little bit, I decided to put these triangles in each corner. Now, a very interesting thing happened. I had seen 
uh, one similar to this, but I didn't go back and check the directions that was in the pattern uh, before I started making this, and I didn't discover until much later. So pay attention to the instructions in the picture. In the pattern, it had a triangle on the other side as well, which would then make this very symmetrical in the center. When I got around to quilting it was the first time I really discovered it. I like the design. It works fine. It's very appropriate, but it sure did get a problem, give me a problem when it came to selecting a design. So I looked around to see what might happen. I knew this was irregular. I thought I could make something in there that would be appropriate. But I found this square stencil. It's eight inches. My block is eight by 10. So I said, this motif is very appropriate to that. How will I use it? Well, this is square, that's rectangle, and it just will not work. So the first thing I did is on paper, I drew my eight by 10 finished. I then took the stencil, I drew the X in the center so I would have some alignment marks. I put one here, lined it up, and then I put this one here to line it up to redraw a square into a rectangle and it worked, and it worked perfectly. And if you see that laying down and can imagine that quilted, it will fit perfectly in the space. Okay, I have two quilts that I was able to get into the fabric. And these are about 45 by 60, something like that. So since I have so many blocks, then it becomes very practical to make a stencil. And that's what I want to show you what to do now. It's not expensive. The only difficult thing, if I could even use that word, is when you get down to actually cutting, is learning to put equal pressure on both your blades. But the equipment you need is of course a design, as I have here. That's the first thing. The second thing is a regular rotary cutting mat. The third thing, this blue stencil material here called double blade knife, DBK. It's a flexible plastic. So you need something that's flexible. The hard plastic that we use for templates are just impossible to cut with a double blade knife. So you need a flexible plastic in order to do that. And then the last thing is you need a special cutting knife. This one is made by company Olfa, which makes our rotary cutters, but it has two blades here in it. And that's for cutting a channel. There was for years another one on the market, which is no longer available, made by Exacto Company. And these may still be around. It was a craft knife. It was used in lead cutting for lead glass. You may be able to, uh, you know, scround some of that, but basically no longer available. These, however, are, and your package comes with a couple of different spacing elements in here. The way that you cut is to either, you can either draw your design onto the blue plastic, the DBK plastic, or as I've done here, you can make a copy and put underneath and trace through and cut. In this case, I've chosen to do that uh, for ease. But you could take a Sharpie uh, pen and, and mark your design. And as I said earlier, the most important thing and most difficult thing for any of us to do is to keep equal pressure on both blades. I still find myself holding a, like a pencil in which you twist it a little bit to the right. So therefore, the right cut is much deeper than the left cut, and I have to go back and recut. So what you do is I have the design here, and always cut on the same side of your line. And I recommend that that be the inside of the line because then on your outside of your cut line is the full size of your stencil. Don't cut it all outside or in the center because then your stencil will not end up the size that you want it to do. You also need on the, stent, on the drawing to put what we call bridges because that's to hold the stencil together as you see here. These bridges are here, otherwise it's all gonna fall apart. So I would put some bridges in here that would uh, enable me to have a drawing line and also to leave a space so it doesn't fall apart. The next thing you do 
is I would practice a little bit, perhaps on the side, or a good practice paper is just regular freezer paper because it's, it's a little bit thicker. So I've practiced now, I feel confident that I'm able to do it. So I'll put the blade down, make sure that I have equal pressure on both blades, and then I start cutting. And I'll cut down, and the recommendation is cut about two inches and then put your bridge in. And the problem is of, of not putting enough bridges in is the problem that I have here. Because the plastic tends to roll, I don't, it doesn't adhere well to the fabric. So I have too much flopping going on in here. I should have put a bridge in the center. So bridge sufficiently so that you'll be able to have a very stable stencil when you come around to do it. So I've done one. Then I leave a little bridge and I come down and I cut the next one and I need to leave a bridge so that it doesn't cut into that. Now if I've been successful, I've cut both pieces. And if you see there, I indeed have. Then you take scissors and you clip that little section out. And there I have a stencil. Didn't take very long to do it. This other little design took probably less than 10 minutes to do, and this one take a little bit longer, but now I'll have a stencil that I can use that fits my space, and I'll be able to mark the, mark the design now on that. So don't give up if you don't find exactly the stencil or the design that you want, because you indeed can make your own. Hope you've enjoyed this segment. I certainly have in thinking about what information that I could give you to stimulate your interest and your excitement about all range of stencils, the availability, the placement, answered some of your very uh, concerned questions about how do I adjust the space. It'll be helpful and make it much easier and less stressful next time you get ready to do those final three words, and that's Quilt as Desired. Thanks for watching.